Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you're all welcome to our session today. I'm so happy to see all of you here. I see Alan. Hi, Alan. I see Stella. Hi, Stella. Nice to see you. Uh, you're Hi. very welcome. How are you? Happy to um, be here. Uh, thank you so much. Um, nice to see you. Thank you for all showing up, for showing up all of you. We have our guest speaker around. You have Jerry here, here with us. Uh, thank you for being part of Girls for Girls. We are super excited. Um, this is going to be a meeting room. It's not going to be a webinar session. Uh, so you're welcome to share your comments uh, in our chat room and you'll be able to ask questions. And um, I'm going to give a little bit background to these sessions. Uh, so we've been having, we have the Girls for Girls mentoring sessions, which go through, which are six sessions. Then after that, we have so many other things we've been trying to do for the ladies who are uh, part of the alumni session. And this is one of those uh, platforms that we have created, which is a entrepreneur uh, session platform. So in this session, we, uh, we are going to be looking at different businesses and how to grow ourselves. Uh, if you have been in mainstream employment at some point, which is mostly all of us, we've always wanted to say, oh my goodness, let me start a side business. Let me do something that is going to uh, give me more income. Uh, sometimes we have been very successful and we have some of those ladies who have been very successful in that area and have been able to move on to actually being part of their businesses full time. Uh, so we're going to meet some of those ladies as we go and they uh, talk to us and they tell us what are those things that they have been able to do differently that have uh, been able to uh, catapult them to where they are. Um, so the goal of our sessions will be to empower the mentors to take on entrepreneurial business and business activities. 
Uh, we shall support them to transform their businesses using um, innovative business models and technologies. We are going to have very good sessions where we sit around and be able to understand the, the, the items we can, or the things we can use in our own small businesses so that we make sure that they become bigger and bigger and better. Yes, that is the whole point of this session, to share into what we, uh, what we are doing secretly in our, own, in our own businesses that is going to help us all become better in one way or another. Um, I'd like to, Alan could say something if you are ready or if you're prepared to say anything uh, before we start with the session. or she can come later. Thank you. I'd like to, I'd like to invite our guest for today. Um, Jerry, hi, Jerry. Hi. It's so nice to see you. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, yeah. So uh, before Girls for Girls, um, are you, I saw the last time you were on the cover of a magazine and I'm like, oh my goodness, I hope one day I get to meet Jerry. <laughs> I'm so That's grateful awesome. to Girls for Girls um, that we've been able to meet. Uh, we've been able to mentor in a cohort together. For me, it's, I've been, it's, it's been exciting for me uh, to get to meet you. You're one of those people who has actually uh, being able to start a business and be able to grow it and uh, live for more employment and actually go and dedicate your everyday life to it. Uh, so want to start with your story. I'm not even going to introduce you because I don't think I can do it justice. So I'd like you to introduce yourself. Girls for girls way. We do not uh, water down ourselves. We bring our best selves to the table and tell us about yourself and how you've been able to get to where you have. Right. Thank you so much, Primera. Um, I'm so glad to see everyone on the call. 46 people. I'm like, yay. And they're here to listen to me. Anyway, um, thank you so much for this opportunity and those who have tuned in for your time. Um, my name is Jerry Opoka, Geraldine Akelo Opoka Sebunya. I am married to a one Oscar Sewunya, mother of two fantastic girls. Um, next month, they're turning 16 and 13. Um, I've been dancing. I'm a dancer. I do uh, dance fitness, Zumba. I've been dancing since 2014, but my life before that was nice and comfortable in the corporate space. I did nearly 10 years, nine and a half or so years in MTN. I grew through the ranks from um, a uh, sales administrator all the way to managing MTN's you know, top 20 clients, bringing in 80% of the revenue. I mean, I had such a blast. One thing I remember about that time is, while a lot of my friends um, and my colleagues were starting businesses and they had, you know, hardware store here selling clothes and things. I always said, I'm not cut out for business. I'm cut out for employment. Like I need a boss who tells me what to do every day and I give it my everything. I must say I was very good at what I did in sales. Even though when I started, I was so afraid, but I was kind of shoved into the, um, into the field to to sell. And one interesting story that I remember is when shortly after I joined MTN, I called everyone to make sure I did not have to speak to clients. I did not want, I was too afraid. Uh, I got in, did my probation and two months in after the probation, um, there was a training for the whole department and they were trying to you know, fix people in the right positions. These guys came from AT&T uh, in the UK. They were former AT&T staff and now we're doing sales training. They trained the entire department. And at the end of their two months or so uh, training, I came out on the very, very top. I got what they call a Top Gun Award for the best salesperson. And that immediately catapulted me from my desk job into the field, got a brand new car. Life was fantastic. 
a few years after MTN, I went, I did a short stint at Broadband. Um, you know, we're trying to revive it. I was there for exactly eight months. And I remember when I got that job, I was told, we're not sure this company will last. We're trying to revive it, but we would like, you know, the best people on the team and so on. I got on, the investors refused to put more money in. So eight months later, I was jobless. But looking back now, I see some of the traits of who I was. Because when, when that company folded at the time, I closed my book, I closed my laptop, and I was like, I'm free. I did not know then that I was done with formal employment. However, I didn't, I didn't know I was ready. So I went into um, Airtel to work and the three and a half years I was in Airtel I must say were the most difficult years of my you know working life um I fought with my boss I I fought with the entire system um things were not working and I knew deep down in my heart that I needed to leave I knew when I left MTN that you know I'm tired of this but oh my god where does one go? How do I leave? I'm not cut out for business again. Where do I go? Um, so I stuck it out in MTN. It was rather in Airtel. Um, it was tough. And I knew I had to leave, but I did not have the guts to walk out to resign. Ladies and gentlemen, I stayed in Airtel until I was booted. I was fired. And I remember that even the day I was handed my termination letter, I had a resignation letter, but my hand just could not come up to submit the letter. But when I walked out that day, I felt like an absolutely free person because I knew I could start from scratch. Challenge was though, again, I am employment material, I'm not business. I had no business I was running, but this was 2015, 2014, I'd started dancing Zumba. And that's where I met Alan actually. She was like such, you know, a ball of energy and fire and excitement. So I remember in the last, in the last, um, in the last year or so of my time um, in my last job, every day that I saw Alan, I would go and whine and, you know, cry and say, you know, this is not going right. And she was like, Jerry, leave. I think you should leave and start, you know, you can start a Zumba studio. I was like, are you serious? How do I live a lucrative job in a big corporate company doing great things? I've got lots of money coming into my account every month to go and dance. How unserious can I look? That's like, you know, but I thought, you know, side gig is okay. So I started dancing in 2014. When I left in 2015, I realized that, I mean, maybe out of desperation, I was like, you know what? I actually have a side hustle. Because what I was doing with Zumba was earning me 900,000 shillings or 1 million shillings. I was like, you know, that is, you know, maybe people who do side hustles make about that amount, maybe slightly more. If I focused for a short time, I could survive, like just barely survive. So when I left um, for my employment, the one thing that I knew I did not want for sure was to have a boss. I did not want anyone asking me where I've been if I stayed out for lunch a little later. Even now thinking about it, I'm like, oh, that I did not want. So I decided to dance. I decided to throw myself at the dancing while I you know, figured out my life. And every day that I danced, something would happen to me. I would walk out of that class feeling so alive. And that feeling that I had started to tip the scale of what I thought I was looking for vis-a-vis -vis what I found and what I was starting to enjoy. So I, you know, just went all in. And I remember when I was teaching, I mean, I think I've been afraid of everything all my life. I used to, before I went to class to teach, I would sit in my car and say a prayer and I did not want to look in case no clients walked in. I just wanted to walk into the studio and find nobody or five people. And many times I found five people. But um, I remember also trying to, to copy my previous um, instructor. She's an American lady called Kathy. I kept trying to you know, put her same energy and it just wasn't working. So one day I said to her, I said, you know, Kathy, I've tried everything and it's not working. And she said, Jerry, 
stop trying to be like me. You have to be yourself. And maybe everybody will fall out and not come back. But one day, somebody will come in and say, I like Jerry. I like Jerry's energy. And I like, this is it for me. I thought, okay, fine. Let me try that since the Kathy me is not working. And when I dared to tap into who I was, it no longer mattered who came to my studio, who came to my classes. The point is that I was, without realizing it, I was fixing me, I was healing myself. And I said to myself, I'm going to give these ladies who come into my class a dose of me. That meant that when I danced, I literally dropped, I shed everything into that room. And I said to the ladies, in this room, we're not wives, we're not uh, bosses, we're not mothers, we are nothing. We are just the most amazing, beautiful, sexy, sensual women who have come to a place to just drop it. And everyone would giggle. I thought, okay, you know, I would giggle also. And sometimes I think, Jerry, you're too much. But I continued on that trajectory until I thought, this I really love. I don't want to get a desk job. I started wearing shorts during the day. And, you know, in the Kisemeti area, of course, you know, shorts are not such a big deal. Um, then somewhere along the way, I turned 40. And I needed, I, you know, I was always afraid of turning 40. But um, here I was feeling like a million bucks, feeling like I was 20. And I said, I have to cross up into 40 with a bang. What did I do first? I colored my hair white. I thought this is real bang material. And in all the things that I was doing, because I was enjoying myself so much and not trying to think about where I was going to be in three years time or five years time, I did not realize that people were noticing me. I remember someone came and um, said they had a job opportunity for a general manager, new organization. The money, I mean, it was, close to 20 million shillings that they were offering. And I thought I could use that money. By the way, I was broke. Like I was so, so, so broke. It was funny. In fact, it was so funny. I laughed about it and enjoyed it. I contemplated taking this job, but the thought of a boss asking me for numbers, asking me where I was at lunchtime, I said, absolutely not. So when I turned these jobs down, in the beginning, I, you know, I would lie, you know, I'd say I sent you my CV and, you know, I don't know what happened. Then after a few months, I started saying, no, I don't want the job. And um, about 2016, imagine a few months um, from leaving my job, I decided to open a studio of my own. Now I'll tell you a very amazing story. I went out um, with a friend who I thank God for her because she had, I mean, she's fearless and she was ready to knock down anything. When I said I wanted to start my own studio, she was like, let's do it. I will help you. And every day that I met her, her to-do list was five times longer because she was like, we need this in the changing room. We need that in the studio. This, she had pictures from the internet. I was like, slow down. And she was like, no, 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 there's no time. So we started approaching people for financing. I don't like... Um, debts. I have minimal, minimal debt. I really stay away from it. And she said, no, no, we need money. So we went and met a few people. Then I met a wonderful lady from our studio who we asked to, to lend us some money. And she was like, you know, I don't think you should borrow money. I don't think it's right for ladies to start a business with a loan. I said, how else do people start business? You need money. I needed, you know, somewhere you know, in the tune of about 20 something million to start. She said, no, 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 I'm going to take this on and I will try and get ladies to pay ahead for classes, maybe three, six months ahead. That's the money that you'll use to start. I was like, I don't know how to ask for money. She said, leave it with me. I was organizing a potluck then because we were starting to really grow as a community and wanted to get together outside of the class. So, um, at the potluck, she stood up and spoke and said, you know, Zumba and especially Jerry's Zumba class is more than a workout. 
it is a place of healing. It's our home. It's a place where we come. And I mean, I had things that I did not even imagine for a second. And she said, Jerry wants to start her own studio. This is what, you know, this is how I think we can help her. And then everyone was in agreement, which was really nice. I wanted the ground to swallow me though. But the first lady who spoke, um, cause they said, you know, let's introduce ourselves. When she got up to speak, she said, I would like to pledge 1 million shillings towards Jerry's opening the studio and it's not going towards class. My jaw nearly dropped. By the end of the night, we had 11 million. When I went back home, I was so moved. I wrote a message on the WhatsApp group to thank everybody. And those who did not come to the port like, were like, what did we miss? What did we miss? By the end of the next two days, we had 18 million. And that is how I started. That move right there, made me decide that I was going forward no matter what. If these ladies saw in me something that I did not see, that I did not even imagine, and they were ready to give me 18 million shillings, there had to be something that I was doing right. Now, um, many things happened after that. You know, we started, everything was going great, and people are coming to me, they want me suddenly to do shows and things. But the thing that I noticed was that the women who came to my class started coming and saying, I feel great. I sleep better. I started wearing colorful clothes. And there were things that small. I, I walk with my head up high. I feel beautiful. I feel sexy. I feel very sensual. You know, I don't stress anymore when I go home. Like I don't want to fight with my husband anymore. Some of them were like, you know, I realized that my marriage is not working for me and I want to leave. But they were coming from a place of peace. I thought, what am I doing? Some husbands were saying, Jerry, we can see what you're doing to our wives and things like that. But I thought, what is happening? That opened me up to a whole new arena of healing. I realized that the dancing that we're doing is healing people. And in my craze of wanting to do exciting things. I really love anything that's exciting, guys. Anything, absolutely. I decided to go and dance. This after we've danced on stage, we've you know done flash mobs and things like that. And especially because these ladies who are wives, MDs, um, mothers, and you know carrying all kinds of titles, these ladies agreed to come with me on my crazy journey. I decided to go and ask permission to dance in Botanica Hospital. I was granted the permission. It was exciting. And yet I was thinking, I'm going to dance with mad people. Like, will they not get excited and, you know, knock me over or something? I thought, let me go and see. That day I went, I had 10 ladies come with me. And when we walked into that room, there were at least 80 people. The room was packed with highly charged especially guys running around those music playing or dancing. After that dance, that first dance, I knew that my life would never ever be the same again. And three years until 1st of March, I, was, I danced at the hospital with these patients once a month for free. And it changed my life. It changed so many people's lives, even in the studio. I realized then that I wanted to do more work with mental health. I wanted to um, learn more about what they were dealing with, what their families had to deal with. I have a sister, by the way, who has had um, an alcohol addiction problem. And now I could look at her from a different perspective. And I started sharing. Interestingly, very many people that I spoke to did not even know that they had people who are suffering from mental health issues. Maybe someone was a bit off and they thought they were off. Maybe someone had anger issues. Maybe somebody just seemed like they wanted the world to always focus on them. We did not know what the definition was or what the signs were of people who are mentally unwell. Anyway, so that led me into um, mental health advocacy and raising awareness and so on and so forth, working with Butavika Hospital. But while I was doing that, um, my business, which then moved to Seoul, uh, before it was bits and steps, I had a partner and I would you know, shed a bit of light about partnerships, guys. Partnerships are not as easy as 
we want them to be, especially when we just dive into them out of um, fear or love for the other person or, you know, let's just work together. It's nice and cool. At some point, you know, things have to get serious and normally becomes a challenge. But I then had to move and start my studio on my own. Again, I was back to the drawing board where I have to face my fear and start this business from scratch. I would like to say to you that because I believe, I said to myself, God, or I say to God, the God in me, I said, God, I am so afraid, but I don't see any other direction to go. Not left, not right, not back. I just have to go forward. So be with me. When I started in the studio, I called a gentleman to do the partitioning of, of the, the space and knock down walls and so on and so forth. This gentleman came, looked around, and I just felt like I needed him around all the time because I don't like or I did not like speaking to handymen. I didn't like um, dealing with builders and things like that. They really, like, I would just become anxious. Francis stayed with me from that day. Francis handled everything to do with renovation. And I remember he would call me and say, don't come to the studio today because if you come, these guys are going to ask you for money. He managed that entire journey of setting up the studio. And guess what, guys? He had a job in Entebbe. Somehow he was never called for his job. The day I was opening the studio, he called the night before and said, Jerry, I'm not able to come tomorrow. We had to finish a few painting touches. He said, I'm not able to come tomorrow because I've been called to Entebbe. I was like, okay, we are at the end. I can handle tomorrow without you. I would like to tell you that till this day, from 2017, September, when I started, Francis has never come back to the studio for more than one, two minutes. He's driven by and said, hey, I just came to say hi. I knew then that God sent him to hold my hand. And, you know, this is where I am. But doing what I have done, the days when I was gripped with, again, fear. And I was thinking, you know, the other dance studios are doing X, Y, Z. It seems to be working. Someone else is doing WF, whatever. And I would get in a panic and, you know, go to their Facebook pages. And I spend all night scrolling. My heart is beating. I'm like, you know, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. I'm not doing things right. Look at these guys. Maybe I should, you know, do something around what they did three months ago so I don't look like I'm copying. And why was I doing this? It's because people also were coming to me and saying, did you see what these guys are doing? Guess what, this, you know, we should do something. And every time that happened, I was so agitated. I was so frustrated. I wanted to cry. I just feel like, you know, this is not working. I'm not doing things right. And then I realized one day I just said, Jerry, do you remember the day you decided you were going all out with this dance business? I said to myself, yes, Jerry, I remember. Do you remember what the excitement was? Do you remember what was special, what your superpower was and is? I said, yes, I do. My superpower is that I am Jerry Opoka. I am not... Mary, Christine, Kathy, I'm not James John. I am Jerry Opoka and nobody else can be Jerry Opoka. No one has my story, my life story, and no one can tap into that place to dance the way I dance. No one can tell stories the way I tell my stories. I have to remember that that is my superpower and stay there. When I thought about that, I was like, yes, yes, yes. I will pledge to stick to Jerry Opoka. The day I made that pledge to myself, it's almost like layers started coming off. I did not care if I had two people or 10 people. The point is that anyone who came to my class, even for one day, even if they didn't come back, they wrote long messages to me that sometimes made me cry, sometimes made me think, who am I? What am I doing? And 
up until this day, every time I feel afraid, I go back to that person. Now, who's that person? Let me tell you some few things about that person um, that, uh, Primera, when you feel like it's nearly time, please wave. <laughs> sure, you can continue. So every time, um, so now in my business, after I've had all the fun and we've done all the crazy things, I stop and I think, okay, Jerry, maybe it's time for you to start making some money because we cannot just enjoy uh, life and you know this 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 business has to start paying for your trips abroad with the family and you know all kinds of exciting things and I was like hmm yeah it's time for us to get a bit serious so I'm looking at the books the reason also why I wasn't too serious about the business is because it was paying all my expenses the paying for the instructors paying the staff salaries and I was just not able to make you know, uh, double, double figures, you know, in my salary to be able to say, yes, I have matched what I was earning in the corporate space. In the beginning, I did not think it was possible. But now when I start to get into the seriousness of things, what does it mean? It means I have to look at actual books of accounts. There's certain things that, you know, I'm just not cut out for. And I had a, I have a, you know, beautiful friend who would always come and say, so Jerry, your books, where are you? Have you checked this? Have you? I was like, I can't, I can't. And she came, she tried to teach me. She tried to push me, kick me around even until I said, you know, give me some space because I'm about to go crazy. I would again want to cry. I have learned now that that feeling that makes me want to cry when I'm pushed against the wall to do what seems to be the right thing is my spirit telling me that is not your thing because it's not exciting guys i live for excitement i live for happy things and slowly i started realizing that you know maybe i don't have to do my books however i must get somebody who does the books somebody who derives excitement from doing books you know so i got a gentleman who you know started doing that work and I said to him you have to tell me the story of my business how we are doing and things like that um he was great he was not the greatest and I learned when I started speaking to other people and they're saying you know you should look at your taxes this way your finances your accounting and things like that I knew then that there was hope um the other thing that was difficult for me was I have told you about how I dance. It's from my soul inside and I bring it out and share it with everyone. How do I then hire instructors who can do the same? Because I would watch people dancing and I was like, at this point you should have said something or you should dance and scream. You should, you know, basically I'm saying you should be Jerry when you're dancing. And one lady who was an instructor actually said, you know, I can't be you. And she was, Against me, she was like night and day. She was so quiet, so sweet. So she danced, she didn't say a word when she came into the class and I was, I'd want to pull my hair out till I said it, let me stay away. But I also knew that I could not continue to run this business by myself. I could not teach. Ladies and gentlemen, I was doing three classes in the morning, four classes in, five cl four classes in the morning, Yes, and four classes in the evening. There's eight classes in the week, including a children's class on uh, Saturday. For years, for years, I was here and I came every day. Even my body was like, this chick is on something else. We do not have the luxury to fall sick. So I did not fall sick. There was nothing like cramps in my life. Like, you know, we were here, we danced until I realized, okay, if I have to grow the mental health side of what I'm doing, if I have to, go to my village because that's something that I started. I need to um, get somebody else in. So I started to sort of pull myself back and let somebody else be who they were. Within a few weeks, people were like, you know, I like how so-and-so dances. You know, she's not you, but she does, I don't know what. So I realized same way people eventually warmed up to who I was. I started letting people warm up to, um, some of these other um, instructors. So I started to say, you know, I need to pull back from the business and, you know, instructing full-time. 
I'm here, but then, you know, I'm not. But when I look outside of soul fitness, outside of soul foundation, which is a mental health um, side of the business, when I look outside of that, when I listen to people and what they say, when they read my mag, you know, my article in the magazine or in the papers, and I bump into people so many times, they smile at me, and I'm like, mm, "Is she a student? Is she someone who has seen me on Facebook?" So I put on my best smile, and I'm like, "Hi." They were like, "You don't know me," but I'm like, "Okay, yeah." So thank you for saying hi. But when I look at those things in my life. I thank God because I wasn't looking for it. And you can imagine people came to me and said, Jerry, now that you've been on every TV station, on every radio station, it's time for you. Everyone is going to be saying, what happened to that chick? She lost it. She is no longer what she is. Again, pressure, wanting to cry. Someone actually told me to get a manager. And I even got to the point of calling a big shot manager in this town to say, can I meet with you? And then I said, what are you going to manage, you know? And I said, again, I have to remember that I need to be my authentic self. I'm not at the point of manager. I did not call anybody to come and interview me and do all these things. They came and found me because of what I was doing. If I continue doing what I am doing, other people will find me. The ones who feel like they need to hear my story or they need, you know, so... I have still refused to get on a place where I am managed, where I am controlled, where I am sold, because I still need to tell the story for me. Now, um, Primera, you said something at the beginning. So many people, and many people have come to me to say, Jerry, I need to leave my job, but I don't know how. Tell me. I keep saying, you just need to leave. You just need to leave. And you need to know that when you leave, life is going to be hard because there will not, there'll be no salary at the end of the month. There was a time I had 20,000 shillings between me and the end of the word poverty. And I remember the excitement of thinking, what are we going to do? I need to buy some minced meat. I need to buy, um, I think we made burger buns. No, we bought burger buns somewhere in Kansanga, Rosa Butchery or Bakery. We bought buns and went home. And we made the most amazing buns with my children. We would think about recipe, um, things that we've eaten, meals that we've eaten in uh, restaurants and I would Google and we'd cook them. We had the best, even better than this time now, we had the best time of our lives when I was in that place because I decided I will take the best of what I have and do and make it work. Now, what is success? Because we say we want to come out of formal employment and whatever we do, we have to be successful. We have to define success. And you know what? You can, you may not be able to define success until you've gotten to a certain place. I thought success was making the same amount of money that I made when I was in formal employment. I have had great success with just a fraction of that money. Success in the sense that I know Jerry now. I know Jerry way more than I ever knew her. And if I was making the kind of money that I was making before, I would have missed out on Jerry because I would have felt like, you know, nothing changes really. Now we're chasing the money. In the time that I have been um, out of formal employment, I know my children better. Some of the challenges that I have faced um, in being self-employed have taught me to handle life differently and to really celebrate every moment that I have. And, um, I have learned to pray. I no longer pray the way we were taught to pray. I have conversations with God. I'm sitting right now in my office and across from me, there's a wall. And a very um, common thing that I did is when I prayed, I would say to God, I do not know what's happening on the other side of the wall in front of me, but you do because you, you can see, you're an all seeing God. So when I come out of my office, I will just keep walking. I will go out. I'll do whatever I have to do, whatever I think is right. If you think it's not what I should do, divert my attention, let my car break down. Just do whatever you need to do because I'm putting one foot in front of the other. It took stress away from what I had to do. And a week later, I would look back and say, wow, thank you. Thank you for either moving me to the other side or 
thank you for making this work for me. During this time of total surrender, I think that total surrender actually came, started when I lost my dear brother, Timothy. It was so hard for me that I just said, you know, I can't deal with this. I, I said to God, you are God, you've taken him, deal with the rest of my life. I'm happy to say in that period of dealing with the rest of my life, I got back together with my um, ex-husband who we'd been separated for seven years. We got married and so many other things have fallen in place in my life, like a perfect, beautiful puzzle. And since then, I try so hard not to let life stress me. I will tell you that since the lockdown in, in April, in fact, for us in the gym and fitness business, we stopped working in March. March was already slow because of all the, you know, the word that was going around, the gyms were unsafe. But mid-March, we actually were stopped by the police. And I have not worked again till this day. I have online classes. That should make me fall apart. Somebody was saying to me, Jerry, I don't know how you can continue being positive when all these things are not working. I said, I'm alive. I'm happy. I'm spending quality time with my children, with my husband, in my home. I'm seeing things that I did not see before. I did not introduce COVID. I did not decide that the world should fall apart. If the president of Uganda and all the powers that be feel like we should not be open, I cannot force myself to open. So how about I embrace where I am today? And that is where I am. And I see somebody, um, Blender Nakazi, I hope it's Blender because I read Blender, has said something about the power of discovering your purpose. Um, when I put out this, the image of um, this uh, chat, I said, I'm happy to share my story in the hope that I can bless someone else into, you know, living their dream. But what is your dream when you're still in a corporate environment? What is your dream when you've not yet taken that bold step into the unknown? And people have said to me, Jerry, you're so lucky you found your purpose. I said, yes, I'm so lucky. But what is my purpose? When did I click? My daughter always says, mommy, when did you know that this was your purpose? I always say, I did not know until I turned 40, 41, 42. But I realized yesterday that there is no discovering your purpose like that. Like you don't say, I don't know what my purpose is. So one day you wake up in the morning and like, ta-da, I found my purpose, guys. Send a message, status update, found purpose or whatever. This is what purpose is. You live every day of your life purposefully. If you are employed, you give that job everything that you have, again, everything that's authentic, everything that is you, give it, but also listen to, listen to yourself because your heart will tell you that we don't like this job anymore. It's scary, but you go back home and say, so what do we like? What do we want? I don't know, we just need to leave this job. Start preparing, go and pray. Sit on your own. I'm learning how to meditate now. Sit on your own and just say, what are we going to do? And then just say to God, show me. I always say to him, do not give me a clue. Do not give me a hint. Do not let it sort of hit me on the head with it and make me know that this is what it is. And he always does when we allow him. So we, are, we can live in our purpose every single day, regardless of where we are. When we do that, it leads us to the ultimate place where we are happy. The place where our energy is happy to be, where we find joy, where doing the job is easy. You're not trying to pull strings and say, oh, I don't want to get out of bed today because I have to go and do you know, my side hustle. I have to go and do, I don't know what. You continue wherever you are, but always make it a point to let the universe guide you. If I have to close my business today, if I have to close the studio today, which I'm contemplating because seven months of paying 
um, the kind of rent that I pay just doesn't make sense. And I'm holding on to it because my ego is like, how can you give it up? It's been three years. If I have to, if I must, I will. And I already say to God, show me what's next. Again, no stress, no pain, because I feel physical pain and all over my body when I try to do something that, you know, my spirit is not happy with. Already I see things and I'm just like, you know, I'll take it as it comes. But um, that's it, guys. Purpose is every day waking up and saying, I'm going to my job, which I don't like, to do everything that I do with purpose and let it guide me. Let me be alert to what the spirit tells me, what God tells me. Open my spiritual eyes and ears. That's what I always say so that I know when you speak to me. Um, do it afraid. I learned that in Girls for Girls. Girls for Girls has been an absolute blessing in my life. Like I felt that who are these people? Alan Asimwe, thank you so much for choosing to come and you know bless us with this gift of Girls for Girls, a place where girls and ladies and women come together and we you know we know what our issues are and we say how do we help each other how does my story lift another one up so it i've learned through especially this last one year that fear is with us every day all the time fear is not a bad thing i've read so much about fear that i know that fear is telling you that hey you are about to come out of your comfort zone you're going you're going to step into a place you don't know instead of running away from it we should be able to say what are we afraid of we are afraid of starting a new business why are we afraid of starting a few a new business because we don't know about the business okay let's learn about the business so what else are we afraid of customers may not come. What would make customers come? What are we trying to sell? Question the fear, question the fear, question the fear, embrace it. When you learn to sit, it's a scary place. When you learn to sit down and say, what are we afraid of? And let it come. That is actually what I've learned in the last two weeks. That's what meditation does. Allow the feelings to come in. Allow the questions, the heavy ones that you don't want to deal with, allow them to come in and sit through and just, first of all, let them just come and acknowledge that I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, I'm afraid of the other. Then on your own, you can say, what is the fear that I have? Because by the time, <clears throat> understand that this fear comes because you've had a moment and when you wake up in the middle of the night, for example, and you're like, you know, I want to start a business. I want to start a business selling milk. At that moment, the, biz the idea is so fantastic. They're like, I, you know, I will sell, I will get milk for my neighbor's cow and bottle it in this cute little um, jars. And I'll put a little label with a smiley face. And yes, I'll take it to all my neighbors, put it in front of their door. They'll pay 2000 shillings for it. And, you know, as the idea builds, you have all this excitement and, you know, some juices are being released in your body in the middle of the night. It sounds so fantastic. You know who you're going to give the milk to and you know how you're going to grow it. Everything is crystal clear. The point is when you wake up in the morning, you'll go and talk to somebody and they'll say, Kiba's cow, jazz. No, I don't know. When you allow that to get into your mind, now you're moving away from what God has given you you have to write those things down because that there is your moment where you're purely connecting to the source. The source is teaching you, the source is telling you that this is where you are supposed to be. And when you take that step into that milk, your neighbor's cow's milk, the world will open up for you. The world will open up. For you. So every time you're afraid, it's basically the spirit saying, have you thought about this? Not do not do it. And this is advice I'm giving myself, by the way, as I'm giving it to you. I'm also talking to myself. Every time fear comes to you, embrace it and ask, so what are we afraid? Because it's really telling you things you have not thought about thoroughly, things that you need to go and fully check so that you are ready to go ahead. Primera, if you don't stop me now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. 
Thank you. I, I don't even know what I can add to your conversation because it's really, really been exciting and it's been um, on point um, from the girls for girls point of view, being courageous, like doing things afraid. I have so many comments, especially when it comes to the point of addressing fear when we start a new business. Uh, there's so many comments of like you're asking the right questions that we should ask ourselves to actually uh, be able to uh, have answers to that the fear can come in, but the questions we're asking ourselves to be able to help with that fear is the ultimate part of it. Uh, thank you so much for your powerful story. And we have a special announcement for everyone. So we are going to be having one Zumba session with Jerry every first Saturday of the month at 7.30 a.m. for all G4G alumni. You have a session once a month. So every first Saturday of the month at 7.30 in the morning, you guys must log in and we have a Zumba session together. After all, I'm not dancing anymore at the studio, so I'll be so happy to... Again, yes. shed all my energy on you guys. Yes. So every first Saturday of the month, we are with Jerry. So if you are not part of Girls for Girls, you had better join Girls for Girls. Miss out. You'll miss out on having a super experience with Jerry. Thank you so, so much. I'd like to ask if um, Alan is online and she just says hi to us and... So hi everyone. Quite dodgy, but uh, Jerry, you've blessed us. I call Jerry gorgeous Jerry. Gigi, that's her name in my phone, Gorgeous Jerry, because you have such a wonderful spirit, and I'm so glad that you found your purpose and you're finding your purpose. My vision for you, my dream for you is to, to spread your love across Africa. You're going to go online and bless the souls in Africa. So sisters, please, as you come for the free classes, please subscribe to Jerry's uh, pages, her Instagram, her social media pages, because that's the way these artists are able to get some form of recognition and payment, because now they get their funding online. So thank you so much, Jerry. I've been part of your journey. We used to dance next to each other. Do you know, guys, that Jerry could hardly dance? She, she used to have two left feet. She would step on me as she danced. <laughs> <laughs> and I would always tell her, Jerry, move aside. You know, we, we had such, we, we met and we clicked right in that Zumba class and our lives were changed forever. And I'm glad to see Jerry take that love for dance and uh, that passion for dancing to actually inspire women across uh, Uganda and soon across Africa and the world. My vision for you is so big, it cannot be contained. And I thank God that you've, you're, you're in the right footsteps you're getting, you're going to get there. Be blessed. One thing that Jerry has said on her business, beyond the fear, sisters, those of you in business, those of you who want to start a business, we have to learn to trust each other, to work with people. We have to learn to get people onto our side so that we do not burn out, we do not break, so that we can grow our businesses. Building that trust is something we have to learn. We've been hurt. But if you can learn to trust others and work with others the way we have done in Girls for Girls, set more and more, you know, working with us, it will make our loads much lighter. So over to you, be blessed. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of it. Jerry, one more thing. Now that you have given us a free class, there is a way in which you are having online classes. Can you tell us how we can reach you? And yes. then so, how we can be part of your online Zumba classes. Yes, so um, we do have online classes. And if you go to um, Facebook or Instagram, we are, we are at, at Soul Enough. Um, that's our handle. Um, Twitter is Soul Enough One. Um, then you can go to my any of my Jerry or Poka Facebook or Instagram or um, Twitter and get in touch with us. We'll share a link. Basically what you do is it's at your convenience. We have pre-recorded classes. So we send you a link and that you do whenever you choose. 
we want to kind of control that whenever you choose because we may give you a link on Monday and you have the whole week and you never work out. Some people are good with it, some are not. But that's basically what it is. Each um, class session is 15,000. We've made it really, really affordable. Um, yeah, and you can pay us via mobile money or you can reach me on my number 0772-212-519. That's on WhatsApp and for um, calls. So yes, you can reach us there and then we dance and just, you know, take the stress off. Alan, you've said something, sorry, Primera. Alan, you've said something that I wanted to speak about. When we say we have been hurt and we, we are afraid to trust, I want you guys to understand that we are hurt not because the other person hurt us, but because we set expectations on we set our own expectation, expectations on how the other person should relate with us. We normally set high expectations, and when the person doesn't match up to what we have set, we're like, they hurt us. No, 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 they did not hurt you. You hurt you because you set high expectations on the other person. Just know that when we are working together, if we want to come together, yes, we may agree on certain things. And sometimes we agree on things because we want to work together, but you know, we've not, life has not tested us properly. We have to know that if somebody has agreed to work with us, what are we bringing to the table? We trust each other. I trust that you have told me um, whatever you said in the best interest of what you're doing. You trust that I have told you and I have to say to myself, am I being sincere here? When it does not work out, the other person has their reasons. They could be flimsy, they could be big reasons. Maybe they've, be they've become, even if it's greedy, it's them, it's not on you. It does not mean we cannot trust the next person or we cannot try with the next person. Again, I always say to God, bring me my divine helper whether I'm looking for a house help, whether I'm looking for a business partner, a receptionist or whatever. And when I ask him for my divine helper, I remove all those expectations that, you know, they have to be this, that, that. God knows who I need. God knows who I need. I have a lady I work with as my admin receptionist and whatever. I would never have taken her if I chose her myself. God brought her and she is gold. She is my gold, you know? So, Again, don't allow people to hurt you because it's really you hurting yourself. Take a chill pill and just enjoy whoever comes to you. You never know what greatness they bring if you allow them to be who they are. All right, that's it. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you for everyone for attending. We have been ha we've had a really nice session and I'm looking forward to seeing you again. So on Friday, we have another session, which is the sixth fireside chat we shall be talking about mental health which you have touched on so it's like continuation so on friday we are all going to be online at 3 p.m listening to amazing group of ladies talk to us about mental health jerry has told us she, she goes to Wutabika once a month to actually dance with them which is really super nice thank you for that for taking your time to actually give back uh, so on Friday, we'll be having a session on mental health, and I hope I can see everybody there uh, on Friday. I'm super excited about that one, especially because of uh, the area of mental health and this whole COVID time. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice afternoon. Have a nice week. We'll see you soon. Primera, Primera before yes. we go. I'm collecting clothes. I'm collecting clothes to take to Butabika. Anyone who has a closet that's full, guys, please empty those closets because God needs to bless you. He needs, but there's no space. Empty them. Some of these patients get stuck for two, three days in hospital because they have no clothes to go home in. Yesterday, someone gave me, the other day, someone sent me $100. I went to a window yesterday and I shopped a ton of men's clothes that I'm taking for the guys who are going to be discharged, um, I think in about two weeks. So dig into your husband's closets and you know, men like to hold on to their things also. Take some of them out, bless him with some space. So yes, that's it. All Thank right. you guys Thank so you. much. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.